according to St. John's Gospel, Jesus' very first miracle is turning about a hundred gallons of water into a hundred gallons of wine. And I'll be honest, this miracle doesn't seem all that essential. It's cool, it's impressive, and I'm sure that it was much appreciated by the folks at the party, but in the grand scheme of things, there must have been more important things demanding Jesus' attention. There were blind folks needing to see. There were mute folks needing to talk. There were lame folks needing to walk. The land of Galilee was living under the oppression of Roman occupation. Fishermen were working all day without earning a decent living. The grieved were mourning. The poor were starving. And plagues and pestilences all around the people were raging. And yet, Jesus' first public contribution, His first miracle for us and for our salvation, is supplying drinks to the party. And that just doesn't seem all that important. It doesn't seem all that essential. This miracle doesn't raise anyone's wages, doesn't provide anybody with health care, it does not address social or economic injustice, it does not cure a global pandemic or take down the Romans' colonial government. And yet, Jesus' very first miracle was taking the time, the energy, and the care to keep this party going. And keeping the party going by turning water into wine, well, that might not seem all that important, unless, of course, it's your party that runs out of wine. Back in those days, not entirely unlike these days, a person's reputation could rise or fall based on the type of party that they were able to throw. So just imagine, put yourself in the situation of the folks at the wedding at Cana. Uh, Just imagine at your wedding, 200 folks show up to enjoy the stuffed chicken breast and roasted potatoes that they checked on their invitation card six months ago but you've only got enough chicken for 75. Now, this party fail might not kill you, but it would be embarrassing, if not humiliating, and even more so in Galilee, where hospitality was immensely important. And in a culture that traded in the currency of honor and shame, running out of wine at a wedding, failing to provide for your guests, and turning out the lights early and sending your friends home empty, it could completely ruin your standing in the community. So when the last drop of wine was drunk, when the alcohol all ran out, The bride and the groom and their families were in some serious trouble. So yeah, sure, in the long run, they'd survive, they'd be okay, they'd make it. This wasn't a life or death situation. And the world would keep on turning, even after the wine ran out at the wedding. But even though this was not an international crisis. For the bride and for the groom, it wasn't just a simple inconvenience. It mattered. It mattered to them. It mattered a lot. Not to mention the guy who was supposed to bring the wine to the party. So when Jesus turns water into wine back at that wedding in Cana and Galilee, 2,000 and some odd years ago. He doesn't save the world, at least not yet. But he brings salvation to a particular couple at a particular party 
at a particular moment that was particularly stressful. All of us, at one time or another, have run out of wine. Particularly over the past 12 months, uh, you open up an email that says your kid's second grade class is going 100% virtual again, and at that moment, you done run out of wine. After sticking a swab up your nose and you see a second red line appear on that COVID test, even though your symptoms might be mild, at that moment, you've done run out of wine. Your wedding planner calls you and says that you better think about postponing your ceremony until sometime after 2030. And at that moment, you've done run out of wine. You've got to take a test in order to see your family safely, and yet they ain't got no test at CVS. And at that moment, you've done run out of wine. In these moments, these moments when we run out of wine, these are, these are on top of the regular moments in our lives before 2020 when the wine ran out. Moments when it feels like you don't got enough energy for work and your family, moments when it feels as though your relationships are rocky, all sorts of moments when the wine runs out. And when that happens, it might not be a life and death situation. But even so, Jesus shows up in our moments to keep the party going. You see, my friends, salvation is not a zero-sum game. Jesus turning water into wine at the wedding in Cana did not keep him from giving sight to the blind man sitting on the corner or driving out the money changers at the temple or atoning for our sins on a cross-shaped altar. Running out of wine might not be a life-and-death situation. And when we run out of wine, I guarantee you there are more important needs somewhere out there in the world. And yet, as our text shows us today, Jesus shows up in the particularities of our lives to offer the particular, the particular salvation that we need in the moment. Jesus keeps our parties going. Jesus takes our empty jars and keeps our parties going. Jesus takes our plain old tap water and keeps our parties going. Jesus takes our inadequacies and our strained resources and keeps our party going. So the next time you find that you've done run out of wine and it feels like your party is crashing, be like Mary. Ask Jesus to do something, anything to keep the party going. It might take a little bit of prodding. But Jesus showed up in Galilee, so surely he'll show up for you and for me. Amen.